And welcome back everyone. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XI. My name is Neon Genesis and it's time to take that run that we also hate to Selbina inside the Valken Dunes. The music playing right now in case anyone's wondering is of course Final Fantasy XV. Okay then, so let's, I'm actually going to get something really quick and that is not that one field support and I'm gonna get after now having 73 tabs I'm gonna get region in case we get uh, hit by anything or aggro anything because we've got low HP because for many reason the game do actually give you uh, sorry do aggro you if you've got low HP and I've also been looking up the mission that we uh, that we were doing inside the Gelsh outpost and just as I suspected we do need to go back to the hut and just click to the hut for a cutscene. Very, very annoying, but it's got to be done. So we'll do that shortly. We'll do that shortly. Fortunately, I can't get around fast just yet, but it won't be long now. I was looking up the level to to ride a chocobo, and that's actually level 20. So as much as it feels forever away, we're only five levels away, which and well, and we're 3,000 away from only level into level 16 anyway. So it shouldn't take us that long. Also at level 18 we can get what we call our first ever sub job. Now I'm not going to say that I'm overly bothered about getting my sub job leveled up at the moment because when I get to level 30 I'm going to unlock Dark Knight. Now Dark Knight will be at level 1 unfortunately which means we're going to have to level again from level 1. But it does mean that our sub job will be Warrior. So the good job that now that we're leveling Warrior is that it's going to save us that little bit of time of going, you know, like leveling up a job, unlocking it, going back, leveling up the sub job and the main job. But the beauty of Dark Knight is we'll be able to use a little bit of magic and we'll be able to do some uh, different types of weapon skills and stuff. Now, Dark Knight do traditionally they use a scythe, but they don't have to use a scythe. They can use great swords they can use swords and clubs and other and other bits like that and you can decide to mix it up and choose whatever you know whatever whatever you want to use but traditionally they're more skilled in scythes or sifts if you like so uh, we, we will be switching to dark knight but it won't be until at least level 30 so when i get a bit more gill because we're kind of broke until things start selling on the auction house at least we will get, we'll buy ourselves just a little cheapy scythe and then we can skill it up sometime. But for now, not overly too worried about that just as yet. See how far we are away from zoning. Well, not too far. Balkan Dunes is on the bottom there. Now, as I said, at level 10 is where you would normally get your first ever party in the Balkan Dunes. Uh, as I said in the last video, you would put your party flag up somebody would invite you and you would go off and party with someone but how it works is to structure a party what you would need is you'd need a tank a healer and maybe four dps because the parties were in parties of six i believe so a party of six would uh, normally consist of anyway as i said a tank a healer and four dp uh, adult four dps but what what they called it back in the day was dds uh, DPS seems to be the uh, more commonly used term in the MMOs these days. Um, tanks, they were supposedly, Ninja was a tank, but it turned out to be a, a DD or a DPS class in the end because tanking, well actually, it was a tank, but it eventually turned into a DPS because Paladin sort of overpowered, um, overtanked everything. So tanks were um, so tanks traditionally were paladin, and another t form of tank could be. Now we've got the rune fencer, which is not a class I really know m much about. All I know is it's the magic defense is actually um, sorry, magic defense is its strong suit. So paladin is, is a master of defense, rune fencer is the master of magic defense. If I explain that correctly. But again, it's been a very, very long time since I've um, even played the, uh, this game, so... I'm just going to check my recording real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Now, these goblins are going to be 
semi tough, yeah, tough look. Don't want to be uh, aggroing any of them. We won't be able to take any of these down. Not tough anyway. Ba 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 bum bum. Final Fantasy 15. I've just recently um, played a bit of Final Fantasy 15. It's really really good. I'm really really enjoying it. Some epic music in it as well. It's rather dramatic music for us running through the Valken Dunes. I suppose it's kind of suited. So the Valken Dunes is a desert, as most uh, deserts are known as dunes. Now what this guy has got here, so this is the guy here, Striker, I think he was the Red Mage 16 we saw. Yeah, Red Mage 16. And he has actually got what he's called, he's called, got Trusts. Now these Trusts, uh, Trust is a type of magic that you can summon NPCs in the game to come and assist you. It's a sort of new way of levelling up in Final Fantasy XI. Back in the day, rather than doing a Dunes party, as I was explaining like three minutes ago, now what you do is you normally get your trusts and you normally go off and you level on your own, basically now. I'm not a huge fan of the idea of it. I like the idea of trusts, but I don't like the idea that things are done mainly on your own now. Now, we can't be too far away from Selbina. Let's have a look. No, not too far away. Now, like I said, these are going to be tough enemies. Incredibly tough. Incredibly tough will destroy me. There's no point in me even trying to attempt to attack one of them. Sand hair. And again, just for the record, there's no, there's no zone music in this area. Hence the reason with the Final Fantasy XV music. These are actually Final Fantasy XV battle musics that are actually going on at the moment, so... How much the, what do these snippers check as? Tough. We will be getting ourselves some trust, and then once we get some trust, the game will change for us. We'll be able to level up quicker, we'll have people that can, well, NPCs that can heal us. I can't tell them to kill me, but they're pretty intelligent in that respect. They'll be able to heal, give us protect, they'll be able to cast magic. So we will be getting to that. And I think by doing these little quests of, you know, going to the latter and plateau from the NPC there, I think he gives us our first set. But things like these goblin ambushes and stuff, we should be able to take them down when we get our trusts. And we will be we will be able to level up better. And we shall also be able to tackle all of the um, you know the, the expansion packs and the storylines and stuff with our trusts. Oh, that's what I've heard anyway. Goblin Leecher over there just casted Aqua Veil, which is a spell that means that if you attack it and it's casting a spell, the spell won't be interrupted or it, the chances of it will be, spell interruption rate will be down. Anyway, by the by, we are, I'm going to turn off the music for just a second as we're about to enter Selbina. Uh, now, but just realised I've turned the game music off so you won't even hear it just yet. Is it going to be a cutscene? I think there might be a cutscene. I think there is. Yeah, there's a cutscene and I have no music on which is a bit pretty lame. I suppose I'll leave this on for a minute. <laughs> Salbinus Mayor is looking for adventurers to fulfill a special task for him. I'm not familiar with the particulars. But Flandius. Flandius? He can direct you to the Mayor's residence. Okay, good. That's all we've got. Okay. We'll put some music on now because you can hear the Salbina music for any of you nostalgic, nostalgic lovers. There we go. Uh, right, this way, I think. There's a bit of a crystal on my left just now. There it is. So as much as that was a hell of a run, 
That's nothing compared to the run we eventually need to do. Which I'm very tempted to try and make that run, but we might be a bit too eager. So, now that we're here, we can now teleport back to Sandori for free. There is also another shop in here that sells some different armour. Didn't mean to click that by mistake. Shepherd's muster. Can I buy something then? No. Is it this guy? No. Is it this guy? Yeah, this guy. So, we can buy... Not much, we can only buy arrows for now. But if we had the gill, look at these prices. Uh, a mithril claymore greatsword for 43,680 gill. Trust me, that is too much money. But I could have bought, for example, a tuck, which is level 23 though. But again, remember, we're in a high level zone than we're supposed to be. We also have Herminia, who also sells some bits as well. A bit more of a reasonable price, they're level 8 gear, but again, I can't wear the armor. Uh, now, where to? I can't do the, I can't do the sub job quest just yet, which is something that you really do want to be having because it will, it does make your job stronger. So we're going to travel to Sandoria. We're going to travel to Southern Sandoria, and we're going to exit. Uh, current guild, 100 and, uh, 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 it costs 500 guild to sell apart from home point number one in Southern Sandoria. Jeebus. Whew. Um, well, we don't have enough guild for that. So maybe we can't actually teleport after all that. I mean, I could warp back. No, I don't have a warp, damn it. Let me see if I can make some guild. <laughs> My god. Oh, this is funny. Let's go in here. Okay, I can buy some materials here for crafting, but not that I need to do that. Let's see what I can sell. Dark crystal for 80 gil. Still don't have enough. <laughs> wow. That is hilarious. Well, I could kill myself and walk back. Note to self, always keep a warp scroll on you. God damn it. Uh, I could sell my onion sword. I don't need that anymore. Ah, fair enough, you can't sell the onion sword, that's fine. Uh, I can check my... I think I can check my Mog house from here. Yeah, let's go to the Nomad Moogle a minute, see if I've got some gill. Really could do this gill. Nope, nothing, wow. Oh dear. Let's put all this away. We don't need any of these. Well, it wasn't a waste coming here. Trust me, we'll need to be here eventually anyway. Just means we've got a bit of a trek ahead of us. So, you know what? Screw it. This is going to be now the run, the famous run to Juno. If I'm at least out in the middle of nowhere, I might as well do the famous run to Juno. Oh dear. This is going to be fun. This is going to be interesting. I've got 15 minutes left of the video and I'd like to try and get to Juno. And again, anyway, if I get to Juno, that's even better. Because I'll eventually need to be there anyway. As that will be our main city, like the main big city for quite some time. And we've got a lot of quests and stuff we can do there. And we can also do the chocobo riding quest so we can ride our own chocobo, a chocobo at level 20. So since I've dumbly forgotten a warp scroll, we might as well make that run there. Also, if we can make it to Juno, the good news is 
I can actually talk to a conquest guy or a signet guy, get a swap scroll and warp from Juno to Sandori for free. So that's the only downside to to doing this now. So Oh sorry, the only sorry, that's the upside of me doing it, but the downside is I have to run all the way there right now. I wasn't intending on doing this run just yet, but there you go. Now, I've got music playing again, so what I'll do is, because there's no zone music here, I'll just turn down the music volume. Now, I would gladly edit this run out from, <laughs> you know, from now up until Juno, but that's the whole fun of it. You know, the fun is running to Juno. That's, like, the thing that people did. So I'm just going to... Now, we want to be staying away from anything like goblins... Orcs and stuff like that. The uh, I think there is a total of four beastmen. I believe they are orcs, which you have met before. Goblins, which I know you've met before. Then we also have Yagudos, which you've not met before. And then, of course, we've got Quadavs, which, uh, again, you've never met before just yet, I don't think. So these are the four beastmen's around the uh, what, what the, the whole Final Fantasy XI world is called Vanadiel. So they're the main beastmen in in Final Fantasy XI. And you will constantly come across them in most zones. For example here, there's a goblin. Now, where we need to go now? We need to get to Juno. And you're asking me, how do we get to Juno? I'm assuming you're asking me anyway. So to get to Juno, we need to go back out to the Latin, Latin Plateau, to the Teleport Hollow Crystal, and then take a turn in off from there into the, um, some some forest called Jugna Forest. We have to run through Jugna Forest, obviously not dying, and bearing in mind these enemies I think are around about level 20, so they're going to be 5 levels higher than us. And then from there, getting through the forest, saying that we make it alive there, we will then go to a place or a zone called Battalia Downs. Now, again, we've got a bit of a trek through Battalia Downs, but assuming we don't die from any tigers, which there's quite a few tigers around, assuming we don't die from any of the tigers or get aggro, which the, the, the chances are high. I'm, I won't lie to you. The chances are high. But if we make it through there, then we're pretty much home free to Juno. And as I said, Juno is the first big major city that we will eventually need to get to anywhere. I wouldn't normally, you know, recommend going to Juno until you're at least level 20. So we are going five levels lower than I expect. But a lot of people do remember their legendary first trip to Juno. I still, still to this day, remember my 10 year ago run to Juno. It's kind of one of those, you know, landmarks when you first do it. I'm actually pretty excited to be playing this game again. I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying being back on to Final Fantasy XI again. Okay, so just on the right hand side you can see where it says Jugna Forest. Just to the right of the Crag of Holler. I mean, I, I could level up and kill these fungus and probably get another level or two out of them, but I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna stand here and grind right now. I've grinded, grinded myself a little bit too silly in the last video, or the video before, shall I say. Uh, getting from level like nearly level 10 to level 15 so uh, I'm just reading what the area is currently affected by the super Cooper power or the coup power as they call it I always call it the Cooper power uh, super Cooper power di dilatory digestion boundary buster and crystal caboodle now, I don't know what crystal caboodle is that's a new one for me the dil dilatory digestion I think increases the length of food time enhanced. I'm um, just going to make sure I'm running the right way. Yeah, we're still running the right way for now. You can see the crack in the background appearing now. And the boundary buster. I don't know actually. I'll have to have a look at that and you can find out what all them do in Juno as well. Juno is a. Upper, lower, port, and ruler. Yeah, so it's a four-layered city, four, uh, four, four, four layered city. Uh, separated from Port Juno to Lower Juno to Upper Juno and into a place 
of the top level called Rulud Gardens. Oh, well, that's how I said it anyway. I could have taken a nasty, nasty route here. Aquavars are fine. They're a decent challenge. Not easy prey. Because normally near these, uh, near this material here that's in front of us, whatever this building is made of, you normally have what they call weapons floating around. And I don't mean weapons as in swords, I mean weapons as in the type of uh, enemy. They're like, I suppose you can say they kind of look like a demon. You will be experiencing them, I'm sure, at some point. Can't believe we're making this legendary run already. It's not my intention at all. It wasn't something I planned. I'm hoping we can make it there before the 30, 30 minute mark of the video. Okay, so we have now and finally made it to the zone Jugnut Forest. Okay, so this is, again, this zone has no music. If a zone normally has music, I'll try to play it. But when it doesn't have music, I'll play some, just some music so we've got something in the background there. Usually Final Fantasy related in some way or form. Uh, I could use the field support and get back to Repriation, which is um home point almost. But rather than doing that, like I said, I might as well try to make the trip to Juno. Got a big run to Juno. I need to watch out for these orcs that are gonna be lying about. And sheep. And then we've got look another orc to my right. We've got saplings, but what I really need to watch out for is orcs. Really, I just need to be watching out for tigers and orcs. Because they're the ones that are aggro. That will, they're the ones that will aggro you. I don't know if these fungies here, or fungars, if they aggro, I don't think they do. I'd rather not chance it, to be honest. Sorry, my, my character lost control because I clicked uh, music. Okay, so, we're making a good progress here. As I said, I need to be careful not to have my map up too long. Because I might run into a tiger or a goblin. If I run into a tiger or a goblin, it could all be over. There's a tiger there. Oh. I'm just gonna keep running straight. No, the tiger didn't see us, that's good. Stag beetle, incredibly tough these beetles. See, we're, we're really really in the nasty territory now. Around the corner we've got a few tigers I remember. So I'd say we're roughly nearly halfway through Jugna Forest. There is an outpost. We should be safe at the outpost but I can't do anything out the outpost. I can't, you know, obviously you can't save this game. I can't rest, even though I don't really need to rest. There's nothing I can do. There's no teleport crystal there. I could be forgetting, uh, excuse me, I could be forgetting quite a lot because it's been a while since I've played. Outpost is just around the corner. Got a tiger over there, look, and a snipper here. Snippers are okay, they're not aggro, they're only tough at this level. Got a screamer, which is a high level version of an aqua bar. Stag beetle, that's fine. Just got to watch out for tigers. I'm not feeling confident that I'll make it if I'm honest. Okay, that, that building there in the distance there is a um outpost. I'll just see that there's not something called a survival manual because so I think later on any survival manual that you have clicked you can teleport to 
I think that's what my brother told me anyway before. What does he say? There it is. Survival manual, let's see. It appears you have arrived at a new survival guide provided by the Adventurers, Adventurers Mutual Aid Network. Common sense dictates that you should be able to teleport here from similar tombs throughout the world. Uh, teleportation assistance. Do I have to pay Gil though? I'm not sure. I don't want to just click it in case. But the good news is, from Ronfair at least, just outside of Sandoria, I could now potentially teleport to... Sorry, teleport to Jugna Forest now. Fingers crossed, which is great actually, because even if we fail this run, at least we can teleport to halfway through Jugna Forest. Now, I think this is the harder bit. We're on the second half of Jugna Forest. And I believe, and that's another one of those kind of smalls that we saw in Latayen Plateau, or Plateau. Sheep's don't aggro, we're all good in them ones. Very tough sheep. Now there, there is a, a tiger. Which way? Straight up. A goblin leecher there we need to stay away from. Up there, look. Oh, we've got a goblin there. Oh, it's aggro does. We've still got a bit of a run yet. Walking tree. Got a goblin ambusher there that I want to stay well away from. Alright, we've got a oh, this is gonna be dangerous now. I'm hoping we can outrun the goblin. Don't know if the goblin's still following, but trust me, once before I ran for the whole zone. And I figured I'd lost, I'd lost the actual enemy, and then about five minutes later, the enemy just popped up and started attacking me, the one that I did aggro. It's quite funny, actually. Oh, we're very, very close. We're at the last stretch. I'm not even going to bother looking to see if that enemy is following me. There's a treasure, treasure casket there. That's not mine though. Which means someone else has been nearby fighting. Should make it, fingers crossed. Got a goblin butcher there, look. There's a goblin butcher, look. We need to stay way away from them. Is it incredibly tough? Nah, it's just a tough, but still. I was just going to say, for the record, are we getting followed? But I don't think we are. Whew, okay, now we're finally in the last zone before Juno. And we have just hit the 30 minute mark a minute ago. I try not to get my videos to go over 30 minutes, but I'll try to, uh, I'll end the video as soon as we hit the Juno. I'd rather finish this run, or this Juno run, shall I say. You know, in this video, really. That was a field manual, by the way, not a survival manual. Whew, who'd thought? I'd just run into Juno is quite an intense, uh, intense journey. For anyone who's played this game before, they'll totally relate to what I'm saying right now. Ignis? Huh, Ignis. Ignis Fautus. Incredibly tough. Now, we've got loads of tigers, look. We need to be really careful here. One, two, three tigers nearby. 
and the Mayfly, which don't aggro in all fairness. I have no map, which is not good. But luckily I remember ish where I need to be heading. Another tiger to my right there. Now the nasty thing about this zone is with all the hills, you can't tell if there's going to be a tiger over the hill. Goblin Charmin, right to my right. Stay well away from them. Another goblin to my left. They will attack me if they see me, and they will chase me. Whew. Whew, this is tough. This is intense goblin to my left. Come in at me, look. Oh, he stopped moving, good. Goblin to my right. Tiger to my right, oh god. I'm going to see if I can go behind him. In a non-kinky way, of course. It'll be a shame to die now. What's oh, moving? That's fine. Whew, this is intense, man. We, we are almost there, though. That's the good news. Goblin to my right. Yeah, we got a hit. Damn it, we got aggro. The good news is it's just around this corner here. Yeah, that bridge in front there, I think, is it? Or if it isn't, it's right near it. Yeah, on the rear down, on my top right hand side radar, you can see it behind me. Oh, that lion, that lion, that tiger was coming at me. Okay, we're nearly home free. It's that building right in front of us. I know there's a goblin and a few tigers around near the zone. There's just a bar, which is obviously an upgraded version of a screamer, which is an upgraded version of a Akbar. They don't aggro though. Yes, I think we're home free. a field manual, I don't want a field manual. I'm going to leave all the books. This is Juno in front. Whew, I'm going to end the video there. I think, yes. There we go. Whew, so that was an intense video. We have finally made it to Juno. And the first thing I'm doing is clicking that home point. So join us in the next video for some more Final Fantasy XI. So until then guys, thanks for watching and see you then.